In this crazy world of hyper technology, we always have to be kind of careful. The next cool invention could possibly become the next dangerous device that could be the next thing banned by airlines. Hello, hoverboards from 10 years ago. Luckily, there is one group of engineers that are the technology police. They are the safety fighters that give the seal of underwriters. Here's Adam Yamaguchi to explain. If you've seen this on any number of products you use, you might have wondered why it's there. It's the certification mark of Underwriter Solutions, a safety science company, simply known as UL. The walls of this establishment in Chicago, the one place where it pays to play with fire. Here will be found the answer to the question, is it approved by the underwriters? It was founded by MIT grad William H. Merrill, who certified the safety of the Palace of Electricity at the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. I traveled to the Global Science Company's headquarters in Northbrook, Illinois to meet Barb Guthrie and learn what it takes to make something break. Applying safety science is really about considering the hazards, the risks associated with a product. If it does result in a hazard, how can we anticipate that and avoid it from happening or introduce that hazard as a test and make certain that the product remains safe mm -hmm. as a result. And all in the name of, we'd rather see something fail in a controlled lab than at home. 100%. What are we about to see here? Well, we're going into the roofing test. Okay. Barb showed yeah. me some of the tests they designed to determine a product's tolerances. Here we're gonna test roofing shingles. Uh huh. And you think about the roof on your house. It is a protective barrier from fire. We want to make sure that the barrier, the shingles, can contain a flame and not penetrate through it. OK, so we're going to light this on fire. We're going to light this on fire. Light it up. Now, this is a combination of both flame and wind. It's going to run for an hour. A full hour of flames. Yes, on and off, 1,400 degrees, with a 12-mile-an-hour wind going over it. Up next, cooking burgers in a sealed chamber to test the accuracy of smoke detectors. New innovations came about with the technology of detecting smoke and the difference between nuisance tripping that occurs from the hamburgers, from the toast, from boiling water, mm. to make certain that when the alarm goes off, it means get down and get out. Burgers were put on the grill. The chamber was sealed. Smoke from the cooking meat filled the room without tripping any of the alarms. Burgers are cooking, smoking, burning. Mm -hmm. Smoke alarms have to recognize that would be a nuisance tripping, we call it, right. so it should not go off. Then some polyurethane foam was lit on fire. So there we have it. Uh -huh. The alarm went off. Smoke alarms are in compliance, providing safety. The burnt burgers didn't set the alarm off, but the real flame did. Exactly. The final test was overcharging a lithium battery which is used in so many of our electronic devices, and as we experienced ourselves, can be very dangerous. I Ooh, heard that, felt you, that, you saw moved. that. <laughs> Surprise. OK. So, but yeah. But better batteries. here than in, in our your, laboratory than, than on in your, your wrist pocket. or in your pocket. Exactly. Wow. OK. You can see exactly where it occurred, uh -huh. which then will help the manufacturer reintroduce design engineering and say, OK, right. we had a weak spot here, so that would wow. not be acceptable. Good to know there's a scientific lab space where epic fails mean safer products for all of us.